Hello everybody, so this is a quick tutorial video on how to set up OBS and NDI. Now there's quite a few great tutorial videos out there, some good Reddit threads that walk you through the general steps. However, I was having a problem in which my um, my NDI source was not showing up in the streaming PC. So I'm on the gaming PC right now, as you can see, but I'll grab this over here. So uh, I don't have NDI set up right now because I'm just doing a recording, but typically on your gaming PC, and just for reference, I'll call this the gaming PC, the one that is being recorded uh, on the gaming PC. After you install NDI, you would go here, you'd click this button, hit OK, and then it would start broadcasting an NDI stream that your streaming PC could pick up in order to encode it and stream it out on the internet on whatever streaming sites that you are using. So um, setting up this gaming P the gaming PC was pretty easy. Um, there were some great tutorials out there that helped with that. Um, so that doesn't seem to be a problem. However, when I would go into, so let's say that this is now my streaming PC. It's not actually, but I'm just putting this here just so that uh, you have a reference. So pretend I'm on my streaming PC right now. And I click uh, NDI source, and I create a new NDI source. Um, the problem on the uh, streaming PC is that when I would click this button, nothing would show up. So it wouldn't give me this NDI stream, it would just give me nothing. So um, that was a big problem, and I needed to figure out how to fix that, but nothing out there was uh, basically uh, solving that or even trying to solve that problem. So I don't even know why there is this showing up because I'm not uh, broadcasting. But in, in any case, on my streaming PC, when I would click the source uh, button here, I would get nothing. It would just, no drop down, nothing would show up. Um, there is also a tool that you can use um, in the NDI installation uh, package, which is virtual input. And it will open a little icon right here in your um, taskbar. And then it will have the sources of uh, NDI streams that are being produced either on the network or on your computer. Any NDI streams that it can find will pop up right here. Um, and then you can activate them just to test. So uh, that's one tool that comes in the NDI package. So basically, if you have a multi-PC set up to stream and you want to stream and you're having this problem with the tutorials that you can find out there, that they aren't really solving the issue and your streaming PC is not picking up any NDI stream, uh, hopefully my solution will land you in the right place. Um, so I'm gonna quickly walk through uh, the steps in getting up and running that many other videos have already done very well. Uh, so if my explanation is not that great, you can find another tutorial, but I think just for completeness, I go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and talk through the steps of setting up NDI and OPS uh, on both a gaming PC and a streaming PC, uh, just so that this video is a little bit complete. Uh, I will reference in the comments uh, what time in the video to skip forward to so that you can go straight to the solution if you are having the problem where you're not getting a source. Um, and what I'm talking about there again is on the NDI source, you click here and nothing shows up if that's what's happening for you. So uh, basically, uh, you want to get these pieces of software, OBS, get Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you have, download that, install it. Uh, next thing, you go to NDI tool, ndi.tv slash tools. Uh, so, or you just go to their website, ndi.tv, click on the tools link right here. Now you'll scroll down and download. Currently, as of the 25th, December 2019, it's 4.1. Um, so download that. Then you will go over here to github.com. Palakis OBS dot dash NDI releases. If you go to the main site, 
that and you can't find where to download on GitHub, you just click on this releases and you go here. Now you will definitely want to have the installer if you can do that. If you can't do the installer, then be sure to read the instructions here for whatever uh, operating system that you're using. I've only tried this on Windows, um, so uh, I'm sure it works just as well on Linux. And I don't know who the hell would have a Mac. So um, another tool that you might want to download is VV Audio uh, Cable. So this allows you to install a virtual audio driver where you can create uh, additional audio streams and then manipulate them uh, through your uh, stream. So for example, if you wanted to have some background music for your audience um, and you wanted your, only your audience to hear it and not yourself, you could run Spotify, which I have running right here, streaming directly to a virtual audio device driver uh, installed by this app right here. Uh, and then I have that chosen as a uh, input in my streaming setup. So um, I can get into that later. Um, and there's another really good video out there. Also, if you want to use Streamlabs, you can only use Streamlabs with the NDI setup on uh, your streaming PC, not on your gaming PC. Streamlabs will not work uh, in creating an NDI source. Streamlabs will pick up an NDI source in order to stream it, but it will not create an NDI source and broadcast it on your network for a streaming PC to pick up. So you will have to use OBS for your gaming PC. Uh, you then can either use OBS or streaming labs for your streaming PC. So let's get to the uh, here are the links for these as well. I'm going to put these in the description um, and then let's get to the step-by-step -step process. So basically you have a, uh, where is this? Where did I put that? There, not there, here we go. So you have NDI tools, you have OBS, you have Streamlabs if you want that. You have the, audio driver if you want that, that's optional. But at the very least, you need to have OBS. OBS has to be installed on your gaming PC. NDI tools has to be installed on both your gaming PC and your streaming PC. And then the OBS NDI plugin for OBS has to be installed on both your gaming PC and your streaming PC. Optionally, you can then install Streamlabs on your uh, streaming PC. If you want to use Streamlab features uh, before shooting out your stream um, on off of the streaming PC. And then on your gaming PC, you can create another audio driver if you want that. You could also install that on your streaming PC and stream, let's say Spotify on your streaming PC, um, rather than what I'm doing right now on my gaming PC. Could do that that way as well. Um, so first install NDI tools. You go through that whole thing accept, next, whatnot. Uh, I'm installing everything into basically a uh, uh, another three gigabyte drive I have here with a streaming folder. So that's that. So just follow through that, that works fine. Then you want to install OBS. So go through the OBS uh, installation. Yeah, mine's already running, so it won't even let me install that. Go through that, make sure that uh, OBS is installed. Uh, on your gaming PC and your streaming PC. Then you need to install the OBS uh, NDI plugin on uh, both PCs as well. You go through that. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again. Uh, once you've done that, so NDI tools, OBS, OBS plugin. These three need to be installed on both PCs. Then you can optionally install Streamlabs on your streaming PC, not your gaming PC, if you want. Now, reboot your computer and come back to this video later. I am quite serious when I say reboot your computer. If you don't, uh, a lot of things won't work and um, 
Yeah, so please do that. Okay. Now that you have rebooted your computer, uh, you need to, and you need to make sure that you do this process, these three as a minimum, on both your gaming PC and your streaming PC. Once that's done and both computers have been rebooted, now you are going to make a firewall rule. And the firewall rule that you want to create is an inbound rule first for OBS Studio. So I've already made that rule and that basically, uh, I'll walk you through how to do that. So you click on inbound rules up here. When you open up this, fire, you type in firewall here in search and you can open that up like that. Now, if you're typing in firewall and you're not getting Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security, like let's say you're getting this one, this opens up a different window. That's not the one you need. You need um, to go to that application. And that application is specifically called Windows Defender Firewall that, with Advanced Security. So you open that up. I already have it open. It will default to this screen. You go to Inbound Rules. You create a new rule right here. Program next program path. So I have that right there. Uh, streaming OBS Studio bin 64 bit. If you're using a 32 bit version, it should have a 32 bit folder in there. But anyway, you go there, you click OBS, click next, allow the connection, make sure it's not blocking the connection. You want allow the connection. All of your domains should be activated there. Give it a name and then finish. Now, I don't want that one. I'm going to delete it really quick because I already have one. Oh, delete that. Okay. So, um, I already have uh, one set up. I actually don't know why two got set up but um, I'm just gonna open one. I think those are apparently the same. Those look to be pretty much all the same. There's TCP UDP for those. Okay, so anyway, um, here's the rule that I created. Now, when you double click open that, uh, double click it, it will open the properties of that rule. And then you have, make sure also that you uh, put the, the direct uh, path to that program here. Um, if you were doing like system drive, it might default to like system drive uh, variable or something like that. Um, that sometimes screws it up. In any case, you want to go in the properties here, you want to click on advanced. In advanced, you have this thing right here called edge traversal. Edge traversal allows the computer to accept unsolicited inbound packets that have passed through an edge device such as a NAT, router, or firewall. Now. In my streaming PC, for some reason, this was set to block edge traversal. Um, I randomly found this and put it to allow edge traversal. And then, and I hit apply and did it, all that. And then magically, when I went into my gaming PC on my streaming PC, oh, I should have changed the text here. So let's say we're back on the streaming PC right now. Um, I went in and I clicked on the source and there it was. So on my streaming PC, I had to allow edge traversal and then it was able to pick up the source. Um, however, you still want to make sure, so let's see, I want to go back to uh, gaming PC here. So now we're back on the gaming PC. On the gaming PC, you want to make a rule and make sure that you also have uh, either defer to user or defer to application. The ones that definitely will work are allow edge traversal and defer to application. Uh, the OBS application will uh, want those kinds of packets to not only be sent, but sniffed. Um, allow edge traversal forces your entire computer uh, to allow those packets but of course it's safe because it's only allowing it for this program um, so i would ideally just recommend putting it to allow edge traversal like that 
uh, and that should work. If you want to make that on both your uh, gaming PC and your streaming PC, putting it to allow edge traversal, uh, that should work as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Might as well. See, I'll put it for both UDP and TCP. Uh, another thing that you can do is simply, let's see, protocols. So here you can just put any, and then you, you can only have one, you only need to have one rule. Um, so here on protocols, it has any, I can now delete this rule. I don't really need it. I don't see why I have those rules either. Might as well clean up my firewall here a little bit. Um, so now I basically have one solid rule that is on all domains, allowing edge traversal on uh, any protocol types. So um, that's not the safest thing, but then I do have a firewall on my router as well. So uh, just for one application, I'm not worried about it. So that is the big uh, thing that you want to do on both your uh, gaming PC and your streaming PC. You want to make sure that you have that uh, uh, properties in your firewall setting, advanced tab, and then allow edge traversal there. So once that's done, you should be able to uh, get that source plugged in with uh, OBS where on your streaming PC. So we're on the streaming PC now. We go to the NDI source properties and you finally can see the source there. In another way, like I said, once you have the NDI tools uh, installed, you can go to NDI tools and then use the virtual input um, thing in the taskbar to see if it uh, finds that. There's also this one here, Studio Monitor which is this application here and right here where it says none, if it is detecting any um, uh, NDI streams on the network, then the NDI stream on the network will show up here and you can activate it. And this window will actually show you what is streaming out on that NDI stream. So that's another way to test it as well. The NDI studio monitor. All right, well, that is uh, hopefully the last uh, of the problems that people were having because I love this setup. It's great. Um, yeah, so like, share. This seems to have solved the problem that I was having. I saw a bunch of Reddit threads of other people having the same problem and nobody answering seemed to understand the problem that there was simply no streams there were no ndi sources showing up on the streaming pc when we when you were trying to add a ndi source in uh, obs or streamlabs on the streaming pc so that should be a pretty complete walkthrough including uh, a minor fix that some people might be having all right thank you goodbye